All right. Bow, you should be good to go, buddy. You hear me? Yes, yes. What's up, man? Right, brother. And we are recording. Dude, I'm I'm hopped up on freaking caffeine, bro. I am I am hopped, man. I'm jacked to the tits. So let's talk about some stuff. Right. What does even that mean? <laughs> jacked to the tits. <laughs> I don't even know anymore, man. I'm speaking no, new languages and shit. I'm seeing visions. Man. I, I hear you say that often, bro. I have no idea what that. That's the most white term I ever heard. What the fuck, Jack? The white, white term. Thou doesn't speak Caucasian. Oh man, Jack that's funny. To the tits. Oh man, Jack. To the, I got that from. Um, that's a uh, what is it? Ryan Gosling from The Big Short. I'm Jack to the tits. What does that mean, though? <laughs> just fucking psyched up, dude. I'm caffeined up. <laughs> Steroids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> guys, this is your chance. You have me and Val. Let's talk about what do you guys want to talk about today? Hit me with some topics. I know we got some earlier. Um, one of the first questions, Val, that someone really wanted us to talk about is, oh, this is such a good question. Leverage. Using leverage, bro, is Val, Alex, or you using leverage? Please talk about leverage. Val, you want to start? <laughs> we, all, we, all, we all use leverage. You sign up for Cobra, you get four to one buying power. I have $35,000 in the account. Why wouldn't I use leverage if it's a nail and bill? Exactly. As long as people you are people, people are afraid of margin, it's because they are bag holding shit. You well, don't have to use leverage. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, if you have 35 grand in your account, right? You can use 35 grand. And that's completely fine. You don't have to. But I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with using leverage if you use it correctly. If you're using leverage to average down on a on a play, then that's a problem. If you're playing to, you know, it's, I mean, I don't want to keep a hundred thousand dollars in my account because what, what if I blow up one day, right? What yeah, if I, what, what if I go crazy? I I mean, I used to, I mean, dude, I used to have like $4 million in my account. Dude, I remember I've seen screenshots. I was like, holy shit. I mean, those, those were days when I was young. I didn't give a fuck. Right now, if I were to lose that, you know, it'd be very difficult for me to get back because I'm not Alex's age anymore. You know, I have, I have, I have commitments. I have responsibility. I'm, I don't just have to worry about myself. Right, guys? So as you age, unfortunately, you have more and more commitments and responsibilities and whatever else, right? Kids you don't even know about, right? Things like that. So, <laughs> Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> oh, how many rogue babies you got out there, bro? Just floating around the ethers. I was waiting for someone to knock on my door, dude. <laughs> dude, I, I have a funny story about that. My, my dad, man, he used to travel the world when he was younger. He's claimed, I mean, he's claimed, you know, every man apparently lies about this, but he's like, dude, I've been with a thousand women. I'm like, I know I've got 20 brothers and sisters out there that I've never met, dude. <laughs> like, I, I just know it. Like, I know one day one is going to knock on the door and I'd be like, oh, fuck. Now I got to teach you training too? Like, <laughs> Wait, wait, wait until your dad hits the lottery. They're going to all show up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> If you, you know, that's the thing, man. If you, your dad was a billionaire, they'd all be knocking some. Oh my gosh, dude. These were the days before STDs, dude. So I'm like, how did you survive, bro? Like, oh my God. Hey, your, your dad might be a member right now listening to you, Tosh. So. I know, right? <laughs> Steven, yeah. the reason why I haven't done 23 and Me is ignorance is bliss, bro. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't have to, I don't want to pay. <laughs> I don't want to pay, dog. <laughs> Why am I volunteering my fingerprints to the FBI? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, so I think by nature, the guy that asked this question, Moksha, I think by nature, bro, an individual account where you can short, right? You, it, 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 there's leverage by nature, but you know, you, this doesn't mean you go crazy in a margin and you, you overhaul your whole account into positions. It's all about risk management, but to use the leverage to your advantage, if you know what you're doing based on a process, based in you know, a margin account is going to allow you to short. It's going to allow yeah, you to yeah. to This short. is what I, this is what I use margin for. I use margin to be able to trade multiple stocks at the same time without having to put them exactly. in. Exactly. Well said. So it's not because I'm loading all in on one position. I still use my risk management. I have a, I have a max size per, uh, per position. I have a max, you know, that, that's what you do, man. You limit yourself X number of shares max. Per position that way you don't blow yourself up fuck yeah dude and, and and leverage is you know there's many ways to look at leverage leverage in in a in a professional's eyes is utility 
Fuck a credit card is leverage, bro. But but if you don't if you don't go buy an S class Mercedes in one day that you can't afford and you just buy groceries and pay it off, I mean that's leverage, right? So like use something to your advantage that you know how to use, and that's what we do with trading accounts. Yeah, the same goes for real estate. I mean, there's so many ways to look at leverage. You know, you can look at it from a really negative standpoint or a really positive standpoint based on, hey, there's a lot of utility in this for the educated. Oh, that's how I'm going to apply this and that's how I'm going to use it to my life, right? Yep, yep. child support is leverage, not for the man. <laughs> that's leverage in a different way. Oh, shit. Having more than one kiss. Oh, serious. Who, who is that girl about that we found out that like, I think her name was like bundle of Brittany or something with the NBA guy. Like she filed for divorce, like in the first week and got like 250 K in child support. <laughs> oh man. I remember we were talking about that like a month ago. We were like, that's man, PJ that's Washington, the basketball guy. Oh, that is the ultimate pump and dump. If I've ever heard one, she married him for like a fucking week. dude. <laughs> oh my God. That's like, that's like this chart on INDP. It's like you get married right here at 25 and then boom. That's, uh, that's a better service than what we're running, bro. That's get rich over there quick. We need to open up the child support. <laughs> oh, man. I forgot what the hell we're talking about anymore. <laughs> now, okay. uh, Dave, David just reminded us that you wanted to tell a story. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, so I was saving a podcast, but I'll give you a little sneak preview. Yeah. So this is how I know that we are disrupting uh, people out there. Because when, when we started MI, the thing is this. If you take a notice of all what's going on on Twitter, right? You, you know there's big traders out there. They're just watching. They're just watching. They don't fucking show you what they're in. They don't show you any charts. Heck, who the hell posts charts? Not many people post charts. I'm, I'm the only one that's been posting charts every day, right? And I'm by no means the best trader. I have shitty covers, I, but I make it work, right? But you have these guys, which are much better than I am, hiding in the background. You know, they're, they're using people to trade against them. They're not helping anybody. So the funny thing is kind of like, so I'm just trying to tell you about the MIC thing. When I started MIC, people were really pissed off. They're like, why the fuck did I? So they blame me to, for popularizing short selling. Oh, people were pissed. Yeah, they're like, what the fuck, man? Now, low cases are expensive, overcrowding. So they blame the zombie thing on me, you know? Uh, so that's why a lot of the guys kind of went quiet because short selling became very difficult for a while because the algos knew how to squeeze them. Yep. Oh, dude, we're them. Yeah, we're, bong, we're talking about big-time traders that we all know on Twitter, man. They were pissed. I know a lot of the big-time traders. They don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> they hate me. They, um, you know, um, I know all their secrets, bro. I, mean, I, I, I was in their private rooms. I, fuck, man, I taught many of them too. So, um, so the, the thing is, I don't really give a fuck, guys, to be honest. I mean, that's the difference with me than most of these guys. I grew up very poor. I was an immigrant. I, did, I mean, this me having this is already way too much, <laughs> more than I ever imagined. I don't fucking buy fancy clothes. I, I don't, I don't own Gucci shit. You know, shit like that, right? Dude, I, dude, wait, Val, let me interject really quick and say, Hey, did you get your gift? <laughs> Dude, I didn't. I went to the mail because that's what I was going to say. I was, I was going to laugh as I was like, the only time I've ever seen Val buy designer is an entire life is that every time he goes to Paris, he buys me and Alex some type of Louis Vuitton. So it's like a Gucci belt or a Louis belt. And it's so funny. It's almost like a joke each year. They're great gifts. But dude, like literally Val does not spend money on himself. Like it's insane, dude. So, so when he says so, that, guys, he's not kidding. So when we joined, they threatened, dude, they were so pissed, dude. They, they, and then the, the true validation was when I don't, I don't want to fucking say this shit. I mean, he might be listening and shit too. So, uh, just just know that guys, we I, I know that what we're doing is is the right thing for society, but the right thing for society doesn't mean the right thing for the big guys. And so this is where politics come in. This is how they kill off the guys that are trying to, you know. So just just beware. This may not last forever, guys. And it's not because of our fault. It's because of shit, man. The bigger powers above, right? Just like penny stock trading, dude. I was so fucking good at what I did. Yeah. And they came and they changed the rules, dude. They literally changed the rules. So I'll tell you some of the rules they changed. Penny stock. Fuck him out of his accounts, too. Like market makers, dude. Yeah, I got market makers banning me. Okay. Uh, the thing is, yeah, market making is a private institution. So they, they can ban. And the way they ban is they, they threaten your brokerage and say, if you don't get rid of this motherfucker, we will shut down your entire account. 
and the market, uh, and you can't get rid of like a, a knight or a citadel. Yes. Right? You can lose everything. So it's just too much for them. So like, let me change. Let me tell you how some of the little rules it changed over the years. So they they had a rule. So before I was like, dude, I, I knew how to game the system. It's all legit. Obviously, I knew how to move stocks legitimately, the same ways that the algos are moving it. So I used to move the same stocks. And so they created this new rule where you cannot cancel any orders five minutes before the open. So you imagine that fucking rule. You imagine you place it in a fucking order. You cannot cancel your order for five minutes until the market opens. Bro, how the fuck would fantasy orders even work? You could, like, that's insane, dude. Yeah, dude. So one time what happens, like, fuck, I couldn't get out. And they fucking, they fucked me on a big order. And, they, and that's when I knew about the rule. <laughs> I knew about it because they were fuck. And I screamed, I screamed at the fucking uh, broker, like, what the fuck? Um, and they said, yeah, that's the new rule. And then they made another rule on me. They go, I cannot uh, for, cancel. I had a two to one ratio of cancel. They told me that I was spoofing, that I canceled too many orders. They wouldn't fill me, right? And so, you know, like when you place an order and they don't fill you, you cancel. Yep. And so you, you, you move up your orders, right? And so what they did was they, they instituted a two to one ratio where every two cancels i had to fill one otherwise they'll they'll delete my account <laughs> what the hell? so so what i would do is i would create a dummy so i would find like a sub painting like oh oh one and every time i canceled i would hit that fucking guy just to maintain my ratios i always had a two to one buy like uh one buy for every two cancels dude so, that takes an engineer's mind man i'm telling you that is not for the normal retail trader <laughs> Yeah, so you know, you, you, this is like the cat and mouse game to the point where, you know, then I just said, fuck, dude, it's not worth it. Because what happens is it's so unregulated, the penny stock world, yeah. where so the, the Wolf of Wall Street movie came out, it screwed everybody and all that. So I said, fuck it, dude. So I dropped in, you notice I don't trade that shit anymore. Yep. But, um, and then also they had a rule where, so this is the reason why Fannie Mae trade was so good. Okay, it's not the money, guys. I'm telling you right now, I cracked their fucking code and I killed and them. Liquidity, baby. Oh, and so yeah. what happened was Fannie Mae was a New York stock exchange stock, a listed stock that, that became a penny stock that went to the pink sheet. And so they were still using the same algos. So the algos had like 500,000 shares on the bid offer, right? You see the ECS right now, they, they, you know, they, 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 they spoof it. They have 100,000, 100,000. So, so there are no ways, no one's going to hit that shit, right? And so I fucking hit it. <laughs> That's how I made all that money. <laughs> so I sprayed, they, they were showing 500,000 share offers and bids and I hit that shit and I stuck them with their own game. So the very next game, they, they turned off their algo. So now they started to hide shares. So instead of showing hundred thousand, 200,000 shares, they showed only 5,000 shares or 300 shares oh, and hiding man. behind that a million shares. And then, um, so they, they got FINRA to help in with their scam. So FINRA created a new rule where you cannot hide anymore because it's, it's cheating. Hiding shares are cheating. Okay, great. Everyone exposed their fucking hand, right? And so if I put a sell 20,000 shares, it will show 20,000 shares. I cannot hide it anymore, right? Except what? Market makers can hide it. <laughs> oh, my God. So only retail was exposed. So, so penny stocks became an impossible game because if you had a big size, there's no way to hide your big size. But the market makers can hide their size. After so, that was never found again. <laughs> So, you know, I realized, you know, it's fine. You know, I, I, you know, you make your money, you fucking move. You never seem to complain. I'm like, fine. And, you know, you find another market because eventually every market is going to be figured out. Okay. And small cap, same thing. So it came the fucking algos for the zombie rule. Back in the day, there was all day faders and none of these zombie shit. Yeah. So now they, they started this dude. So, so this, so what you, it's funny because I see, these guys on Twitter crying. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, man? You made so much fucking money, you donkey shit. Where now you're crying because you don't get your way. I mean, dude, of course the market's changed. You have to adapt. One thing that, that never changes is your risk management, dumb fucks. Risk right. management. That's one thing I keep telling everybody is a secret to longevity and success. Look at Alex. Risk management includes not trading past a certain time. That's risk management. Risk management means using the 30% rule. 
risk management means, it means keeping smaller account so you don't blow up, things like well, that. And the reason why is because no matter what market conditions happen, Alex is going to make money and survive. That's what a process does. Like these guys don't get it. It's not like, like, like they think that things will never change. It's not like Trump's going to be president for the next hundred years. Things change. You got it. Like roll with the punches, man. Like that's every, the I, check this out, man. The people didn't even know the markets used to be in fractions. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know okay. how. Okay, IBM, IBM was literally trading eighty-eight dollars and one one eighth. <laughs> one eighth, Jesus. Okay, so take a look at what the spreads are on one eighth or one fourth. One fourth is twenty-five cents. Market order, you're down a shit ton of money. <laughs> so, so that's how they used to make money. They used to make money on the spreads. That's why they call it market making, right? You buy on the offer, you sell on the bid, whatever, right? Yeah. And so that's how they made their money. So when decimalization came, it was a big deal, man. People were like, holy shit, how can I make money? Because they were, they were playing the spread game. All they were doing, just making money on the spread. That's what I used to do too. I used to be on the offer on the bid all day long on these penny stocks and making the spread. And with a penny stock, a fucking tick is huge. It's like 8%, 5%, right? Yep. And, that's, and, and, so, and so that's why penny stocks were great for me because I was making, I was doing pay, uh, market making type of trades. That was a market maker. Now they, they introduced the, the PDT rule because of you. <laughs> so, I mean, all, all these, so the, my whole point of this guys is the fact that shit changes Yep. and you don't see these big traders on Twitter posting shit anymore because they're like, fuck man, they're, they're, they're losing their fucking m money. Cause these, you know, these guys make too much money ready, man. I know how much they make. <laughs> I mean, fuck how much greedy more you got you motherfucker. So yeah. my whole goal is to give back. And so when we started MIC, dude, you don't understand that we had a lot of threats, man. We had a lot of trolls. We have people reporting us. You have no idea, dude. They, they, they were making up so many fucking lies. Oh, you man. notice that we, me, I'm the biggest trolled guy for some reason, right? People always wonder why he's so trolled now. Because, you know, they fucking, they're out to get me because, dude, I'm sharing this information with you guys. Nobody trolls a non-threat. If you're not a threat to somebody, they don't give a fuck about you. You're going to fade into the distance. When you're a threat to somebody, they will, they will do whatever they can. And I'm the most transparent guy. I'm the guy who posts my fucking charts every day. And they're still fucking trolling, right? Um, I was trolled before MIC. So uh, this, I mean, that, right, this has nothing to do with what we're talking right now. It, it would just it had something to do when, when you were talking, Tosh, and I just said, remind me, because this is yeah. something that's great for the podcast well so. it was about the get rich quick mentality bow of like consistency versus actually slow and oh yeah. yeah we go this is a topic guys flash, flash over consistency in my years think about this i am the one of the only guys still left over from the dinosaur age that's still out here helping you guys right most of those guys have made their fucking money in secret and get the fuck out or blow up or mm -hmm. or are not here or blown up, most of them blown up already. So 90%. And so uh, trust me, man, those guys want to start a service. They, when I started, they, they laughed at me. They go, Bow, no one's gonna fucking listen to your scalping ass. They call me a scalper, a piker. I'm just laughing. Okay, man, you call me what the fuck you want. Why are you threatened by me, man? <laughs> and so they literally, they, they literally threatened me. They, and then, <laughs> And then there's a surprise when we launch and how many people, because the, the fact that, dude, these guys, if you take a look at all these other services, right? If you, if you guys are on YouTube that you're not in MIC, this is what, this is the thing I'm, I'm telling you, man, take a look at why they start the service. Is it for a money grab? Most of these motherfuckers are out here for the money grab. They don't give a fuck about their members. If they did, they would stick around like I do every day to educate, win or lose. They would not disappear. They would trade like their members. They would not fucking be trading no 20,000 share positions on Tesla and then average down and fucking losing millions of dollars. That's not the way that a guy with a $30,000 account should trade. You see what I'm saying? So Alex and I actually started to trade the way that you guys should be trading. Because trading a million, $4 million account is much different. And so, you know, we can have that shit on the side. It's completely fine. But, you know, we're actively trading with a $35,000 account. It's fucking hard, man. I'm telling you, it's not easy. The hard part is this. The hard part is not making money. The hard part is being satisfied with the money that you make. 
You know, I was making millions of dollars before. Now I got to switch back to fucking making a thirty-five thousand dollar account, right? So yeah. it's like, like on a thirty-five thousand account, I could be up three thousand dollars, and I was like, "Fuck, that's not enough," <laughs> right? Compared oh, to before, sure. right? Percentage. And so, but but the real the reality is that's a lot of fucking money. And so this is what I'm trying to tell you guys: uh, don't look at these fucking guys posting these flashy P and L. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. You cannot do that. It does not help you to look at a guy fucking averaging down diamond hands. Diamond hands is bullshit. I am not here to try to impress anybody. Right. You know, you are, I am here to teach you how to make money for your family, for yourself. And the way you do that is stick to the process. Do not get greedy. I see all these guys now on Twitter asking about fucking like how to get rich quick. And they, they doesn't want to work. Right guys. And I'm telling you guys, yep. Look at Alex. The process works, guys. The process works. You need to level up the right way. Uh, the, make your money and get the fuck out, <laughs> to be honest. So if you are a short bias trader, stop at zombie hour. If you're a long bias trader, you figure out which ones are stuck, and then you start fucking trading at the zombie hours. So take a look at INDP. Take a look at the zombie hours. When did it start bouncing? At 10 fucking 30. I'll draw, right I'll draw let a me, line. I'll draw a line. I'll draw a line. Show them, Tosh, exactly what time INDP started moving. Guys, let me zoom in on this. This is pre-market. The shaded area is pre-market for those who oh, are- oh, 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 this is uh, INDP and also IRNX, IRNT. Guys, so this is- Oh, IRNT. Okay. Okay, um, both me, of them, both of them. Let me pull up side by side one sec. I'll just do side by side. Take a look at IRNT. My God, 1030 on the dot. Yep, let me draw, let me draw. Just so you guys can get a visual representation, right? Here's the first hour. See that? 7.30. Okay. Dude. Dude. That's crazy on the dot. Like that's- You see that shit, guys? So the whole point is it took us losing so much money over decades to understand this, to teach it. And then- This zombie we effect it, is what- This zombie effect is what kills short sellers. Well, and that's what I'm saying. And then once we taught it, like everybody in the world threatened us because they thought we were giving away the secret holy grail. And then they, the good traders started blowing up and we're like, dude, we're just educating people on what the realistics of stock trading are. There's no bias. You're getting crazy. Look at this shit, man. It's not, even, it's, not even a co it's not a coincidence, guys. Take a look at IRNT. Draw that shit. 10 it's fucking fire. 30. Look hey, let me this. draw it for you guys. Look at this. Holy shit, guys. Look at this. You are a long bias trader. Zombie time is your fucking best friend. If if you're a short seller, zombie time is your fucking enemy. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Simple like, as that, guys. It's here, 10, 30. Holy cow, man. This is crazy. Oh, man. Oh, my God, Tosh. This is, this is even, no, no, this it, even it, crazier it, than I thought. This is nuts. This is nuts. I love when I love Bow when it's like to the to the minute because it just shows guys that we're right. The process works even more. Like this one, obviously it was still very, very accurate, but my God, man, the two major stocks today that were up in the morning were INDP and IRNT that were near VWAP, over VWAP, trend was intact and they were quote unquote front side, quote unquote MIC process hot chicks. Guess what they did? They were a headache to shorts all day. And I'm not talking about this kind of shit where shorts get bailed out later if they hold down $30. I'm talking about they were a headache. That's what I'm talking about. The process works. Look at what Bao just posted. Draw a line at zombie hour. This is how you stay safe and this is how, or if you're stubborn, this is how you die in trading. This is how yeah, you let me, let me, Here's the INDP. 1030 guys, take a look at this, man. This is crazy. Doesn't, like, dude, <laughs> it, it just doesn't get more accurate than this. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. These are the hot chicks of the day. You have one of these trades, you're done, dude. Don't get back in the well. Start to look for these type of plays if you're a long bias trader. Yep. 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 Look, yep, look yep, at that. That's that's disgusting, dude. <laughs> it's just crazy, man. It's just, it's just crazy because it's just solidified. I, yeah, I NDP was nineteen bucks, dude. Sick. Th think, think about that, guys. From where this zombied, eighteen to nineteen, arguably to to twenty nine bucks. That's crazy. So you can go out anytime you want and make your your pay and leave. So the problem is people keep getting into the stock and want it higher and higher. At some certain point, the risk reward ratio is completely gone.
Oh, shit. <laughs> Dude, Val's got so many freaking stories, man, David. It's so fun. <laughs> like, it's just popcorn time when Val busts out the highlight reel of stories. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, the zombie the zombie rule is something that they never even fucking discovered. That's why a lot of these guys blew up. And then um, but now I was talking about <laughs> um also let me talk about INDP. Why yeah. why it got blown out and all that stuff. Okay. Well, so man, people are complaining, like, why did it tank so much? Well, this is all hindsight, obviously. All hindsight, obviously. So um, anybody that tells you they know for certain don't know shit because otherwise they'd be shorting everything at the top. But to explain this IMDP, basically it's a very typical fucking this thing. This thing went from eight dollars to twenty eight bucks. So when you see a parabolic move like that from twenty one to twenty eight, it means that short sellers getting blown out. Longs are not chasing this guys. Who the hell is buying this shit at twenty eight dollars? Only people that are buying this shit are short sellers. So when you see these guys like, oh, you're a dumb man, who's buying this? They really don't know about trading guys. They, they, they complain who's buying this. It's the short sellers that are stuck, that are complaining. Like, who would what retail are buying this? So it's not the retail. So I keep telling you this all the time. Shorts is what makes, makes stocks move up, not longs. Because if, if it's an overcrowded long, it's going to go tank down. So eventually, it over, so when the shorts got blown out, it started to go down. So when it go down, the, the, the make it or break it is the $20 line. The nineteen, the twenty dollar line is the make it or break it. Take a look at the volume. What's the volume right there? Is at twenty bucks, and at that time, I think the VWAP was like eighteen or something. So it's pretty close, man. It's a, it's a, it's a toss up. So if you were to go along at at twenty bucks, make sure that you're going small with a wide stop and have a stop because under a certain point, it's game over. Eighteen dollars is the last, the last support line, guys. It's very obvious. Draw the line at 18 bucks. Let me draw it for you guys. One sec. So like I tell you guys, line to line, man. All we can know is line to line. That's the most basic way to understand any stock. I like to draw circles because circles is actually better for me to see than a line. So here's, a, here's the last support line. Guys, I highlight this because this is what Val's talking about. Shorts are natural buyers. This is them buying, exiting their position, getting squeezed out their ass. This is what this is. That's how you get a major parabolic move like that. Here, let me draw this. So this is the last major support, guys. Yep. So what goes when it so the way you figure it out is on the way up. On the way up will determine on the way down. Val's talking about this general area right here. It's the 18 line. It's the 18 line, man. Because that was what supported before the blast off. And and it's kind of like a coupling factor, right? Val, it's it breaks VWAP and breaks the 18 line. That's like a that's like a double factor, right? So you you so this is the thing. This is why it's like we don't really know it was $20 or 18. So that is where the wide stop comes in. I would reduce the size significantly. But buying shit on the way down is very tough, guys. When a stock goes from twenty eight to twenty dollars, eh, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. Yeah, because because think about how much overhead this is, guys. You have to think that everybody from here. So if you are buying at eighteen, you have to think that everybody in this gap right here who bought are underwater. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. How many people are underwater? So just be careful if you are buying this. Like you have to know that, right? There's a lot and, of people underwater. And, vol and volume is declining. Yeah, yeah, literally. So, like, let's bring up the volume. As you so, guys, yeah, I posted a chart on um in webinar, so you can see the chart and the volume profile and all that stuff. So, as you guys can see, the volume's even going down. And right here, oh, the volumes are important, dude. To sustain the okay. shit, the volume goes down as well as the price going down. You know, it's good. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, okay. Any questions on that? So, so no one knows anything I did DP, but I just know that when I'm looking at that chart, shorts are getting blown away. And then when there are no more shorts, guys, when there are no more shorts and no more pumpers, what happens? All the no one left to buy. Everyone's so when the shorts are gone, who's left to buy? Not the longs. The longs are ready to sell. You already own the position and you're long, you're pumping that shit out. So you're looking to sell. And so what, what happens is when VWAP gets broken, everybody just want to get out for even, right? 
And so every uptick gets sold. Every uptick gets sold. Dude, this ain't rocket science, man. It's but psychology. the best way is to avoid this shit altogether because you. this is one of these anomalies happens once a week, but it's still an anomaly where you cannot predict this. This is not something that's predictable. That's not something that's consistently predictable. So think in your head all the time. Is this consistently pick, uh, predictable? If it's not, don't fucking trade it. Because we are, we are not here to gamble. We are here to trade only predictable stocks. And that's why I call it conforming to the chart. This right. fucking shit is out of control. Who the hell knows? It's just too difficult. And, and think about it, guys. The guys that are like, oh, I knew this. I knew that. Then why didn't you short 200,000 shares right here at 28? If you did know, if you tout around on Twitter like you do know, then why don't you have a private island, motherfucker? Like, come on, man. So anybody that tells you, oh, I knew this would go from 20,000 to 10 in the same day, they're full of shit, man. There's no way to know that unless you got insider information. And even them probably wouldn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> There's some dumbasses out there, even with insider information. Hey, like, my, my, my advice to you, if you have insider information, don't share it with anybody, including me. Please don't share it with insider yeah, information. Please do not. We don't want that kind of screaming. <laughs> I don't want to hear it, dude. Uh, you know how many people tell me shit? I don't want to hear it, dude. Dude, and the funny thing is, Val, it's like, we don't even need it. <laughs> like, Having insider information actually makes it worse. Imagine if you knew some shit was coming and then you, let's say you knew an offering was coming. You didn't know when though. You'd be shorting from the beginning and fucking blown out. By the time the Why? offer comes out, you're, you already stopped out. <laughs> yeah, your mind would tell you, oh, if there's an offering coming midday, then I'm going to load up short. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off my hard stop. And then guess what? Dude's wrong. And then you get blown to shit. And then now you're scared of shit on your normal process the next day when you could have banked or made money. Can, guys, making money consistent and slow and boring. Stop swinging for the fences and stop trying to nail 28 to fucking 11. Make your scalps, make your base hits, get two or three base hits a day. Do this for 100 years. You're rich. You're rich. <laughs> Go get your M series. Do your things. Guys, do you have any questions on any of this? Any questions so far on anything that we talked about? Um, any, I don't see any on YouTube yet. Anybody, any questions from the members? Any questions, guys? Because these, these are some good examples, man. This is a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of movement right now. Oh, I do remember uh, about one of the members was saying earlier in the morning of the webinar was, can we talk about market conditions right now? Like what kind of market we're in? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. A small, a reason I like small cats is it doesn't really give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care if who's the president or what the hell's going on. It doesn't matter, dude. Um, what it matters is, are there fucking small cap runners to be worried about? Uh, because uh, if a stock like INDP runs like this, you'll know other stocks will get pumped up like IRNT, things like that. Because everybody wants the next INDP. And so there will be pumpers out there hoping to start shit up like FCUV. Take a look at FCUV. FCUV. Failed pump. This is just someone trying to pump it up. Yep. Just because IMDP went. Correct. It's so freaking obvious. You, it's so obvious. Like, it's just unbelievable, right? Um, Tosh, what's your thoughts on life and what did you see on it? Uh, let's take a look. Uh, well, the thing about this, man, is like, look, I, you know, Bao might have a different description of this, but let me go back to the pivot points, right? So I don't short anything on low hanging fruit unless it hits my pivot points. So this just didn't do it for me today. Like this, this was a, obviously a low hanging fruit because it broke down the day before, but unless it hits these levels, I'm not actually interested in it. Tomorrow, this looks like a possible bounce candidate. Let me throw this chart. Um, this, this is consolidated already. So this is in a, to me, a coin toss. Yeah. Tomorrow for sure. Like I, bottom and it started moving up. So, it, uh, <clears throat> So tomorrow, I was looking for short if it fucking went up high enough. But it's got to go high enough. It's got to be very clear. And like, unless it hits my lines, which are the pivot points, which about, which we talked about in MIC, guys. And here's the thing about how pivot points work. If you short- I posted, I posted the, uh, my chart, which has it same as source. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. If you guys short at 1026 today at the pivot point and it breaks through, guess what line of line means? You cut it and you reshort it the next line. And if you do it correctly and wait for ideal entries, you will most likely make 
way more than you lost on the first line because you were waiting for appropriate ceilings and or resistance levels. This was one of the keys to Bao's success over the years on low hanging fruit is he just waited for the line. And then if he, and then if it did break, you cut it and you attack at the next line. That is line line trading. That is MIC. And there, there's a couple of lines. There's the pivot line, which works well on large caps. Uh, it works better on large caps and small caps. Uh, yeah. And then there's just normal resistance lines that I use. So right now, 1025 you see is a pivot line. That's the one is line next or Bow's red line right there. The red line is I, that's automatically drawn by the system. It's a pivot line. We have scripts for DOS and think or swim. So you can get those scripts from us. Not yeah, I, I, where are they, Tosh? Are they in the website somewhere? Yeah, they're on the um, they're on the setting up lines, guys. So like here, I'll just actually show you real quick. Uh, if we go to the videos tab and you go under setting up lines, setting up lines. God, I haven't looked at this in a while. I know it's here. <laughs> it's somewhere. I I haven't looked at the uh, setting up lines. It's going to be right here in the TOS one. So if you guys want to see how I did that on TD Ameritrade, that's where you find that. And then we also have ones for DOS, which I have as well. But I always do these webinars on TOS because it's just so much easier to maneuver for me during the webinar. Yep. So there we go, guys. We have videos after videos. You just need to go and navigate through the video library, guys. Yep. I mean, there's so much shit in there, guys. Let me talk about something about MIC. We, when we started MIC, we, we had the video library. But most video libraries out there, pretty much all of them, you cannot – search mic is very unique guys we we can search on it we created a system where you can search on keywords and this was a big operation you know and i i was actually the one championing it i was like dude we must be able to search on this shit imagine you have ten thousand videos it's useless unless you search right right here search is the reason why google became good and so over time get, get what guess what guys we're going to be the only ones with a with a huge library of trading videos that can be searched there's Correct. nobody else that can search so you guys are being mic the right thing to do is start to search man because you'll be surprised that we are the only ones that can search yep exactly and everything like what's recycling shares boom now we have a video on recycling like all oh well, i yeah i didn't just click it but you guys can see that we have a category this you should thank you should thank the mods man we spent a whole week we they they, they divide up the work <laughs> to each moderator to start tagging so that we can search. <laughs> so you understand, man. You man, imagine the manual labor it took to tag all these videos, dude. This, this so you should fucking off. send them, send the mods a nice Christmas gift. I'm telling you guys right now. <laughs> Seriously, man. Um, D Rub, what's up, buddy? Okay, this is a really good question, right? So, as a short trader, what's the max you're willing to allow a trade to go past your line before cutting it and reevaluating? So I'll give you two, two lines. What's that about? I like two lines. Yeah, I was going to say two lines, but it's also like a coupling factor, right? Depending on how you look at it. These are two lines, but they're way too spread out to scale from here to here. So this scenario is a, oh, this didn't line, didn't work out, cut immediately, then hit the next furthest one that's very clear. Now, if that's not some, I'm trying to think of a really good example as like per like just one under view. Here, I'll actually, hold on. Let me go to, let me actually pull this up because I pulled this up a couple of weeks ago. But let me show you like a past really good example that I can just off the top of my head, right? So if we're trading something like right here and it doesn't have a crazy amount of rage like the low-hanging fruit did on life or something, I would be willing to scale outer lines because I'm already starting a little bit outer, maybe 225 to 250 because it's all within the same. And you can see how they're kind of the same level of resistance. It's just this little pump and dump. Like it's not, it's not like, oh, there's a really, really big time frame or whatever. Right. So I'll create a scale zone, whether that's under view up because it's super broken. Like obviously on this one, the outer lines view up because it's trading way under and maybe, maybe I'll give it to 390. Cause if it breaks over 390, I'm probably wrong on this. And then you could just continue to 430, right? Cut and then reattack at outer, outer lines. So the whole key is just giving yourself a certain identifiable window within your trading that is going to allow you to stay calm within your plan. And you're going to understand those lines or where you should cut it based on price action telling you, like I always say, like a love story of, dude, if I hold on to this, I'm really just a fucking bag holder at this point. It's not like, because, because here's the thing, man, you short at 12, 10, 26, and then you're adding like a 10, like you're just a bag holder at this point, man. Now you're just hoping it comes back down. You know what I mean? You're really stuck. 
you're yeah so, so there's an arc to the entry guys your entry is going to determine where you exit so this is part of the pre-planning this is why i keep telling you guys man write this shit down get an index card write it down if you write down your trade beforehand you can analyze it where are you going to enter where are you going to exit when you exit we're going to exit for a loss we're going to exit for a win so your entry is going to determine where you exit Dude, entry is always the first thing you need to master because exits, how, how much are we still trying to master exits after eight years, 20? Yeah, ex exit is fucking, one thing I can control is where I, I enter. Of course. <laughs> if, if, if I enter too soon, the rest of my trade is fucked. Right, guys? If Dude, you have a really good entry, oh man, the exits become so much easier. Well, and here's the thing. If you fuck up your entry, guys, even if you make money by the end of it, it's like trading really big size, right? Like those guys on Twitter, they're just pouting big P&Ls. Sure, you might make money, but oh my God, the stress level that comes with it, you think that's worth it? That's no way to live, man. Come on. So entries are really important and sizing is really important because even if you fuck up, after you have a really good entry, like, and, and like you're a little bit shaky on it, but you know, you have a good initial, your mind's just gonna be so much less clouded and cluttered. If you at least start on the right footing, it's like starting off. Like, I don't know, man. It's like, <laughs> I was going to say like a funny analogy of like, if you're going into the night with a big group of party and like girls and stuff, and you start drinking versus going into an already belligerent drunk, it's like, you got to get off on a good footing, bro. You got an easy way in. <laughs> you don't want to start the party belligerent drunk then there's, you're just going to land on your ass. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Val has something different to say about that. I haven't drank in two years, dude. So I forgot. I forgot what it was like. Focus on the entry, guys. I'm telling you right now, man. Uh, focus on the entry. It makes everything easier, guys. Hell yeah. It's so easy to relax and be patient for good covers when my average is good. Such a good position to be in. Yeah, you, Steven, Steven, you can breathe easy when you know that at least your starter is the outer line that you waited for, man. Not something where you're like, oh, shit, I think you can go to this level, so I, I got to get some FOMO. I got to get in. I got to get in. And it was a FOMO starter. And now by the time you add, even if it's within your plan because you FOMO'd in way earlier than you should have, you're on edge, man. You're nervous. You're jittery. You're on tilt. This is, this is why I, I like fancy orders because fancy orders I place in before the stock even gets there. Oh, yeah. So I don't have FOMO. Like, like what's a fantasy order on this? Here's a fantasy order on this, right? Uh, oop, hold on one sec. So when you have a fancy order, you place it in. So if you don't place the order in, you're like, where should I enter? Where should I enter? Fantasy and then when order. the stock comes to close, close to your, where you want, you may be too scared to enter or you get FOMO and you enter too early. Yep. Here's That's what the concept of fancy work to me is very important. Like, Val, where would you say on life today would be your ideal fantasy order? Because I see right here with this. Life? Kind of, on work? Yeah, on like life right here. Like, that's a good example of a fantasy order. Like, you got this resistance point. So maybe starting. Life here, would yeah. be right now. Well, I meant more more in the morning, though. Nine, I meant, nine, seven, right now would be 9.17. Well, yeah, yeah right now, I, I meant kind of more like in the morning. Like, I want those perfect lines, dude. Like, I'll, I'll wait. It would be 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly where I started, 10 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Except maybe even 9.95, undercut Val. <laughs> it would not feel 10 bucks at that point. Did it feel? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, buddy. Dude, Alex to watch this is a fucking it's whoa, 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 whoa. check out our chat. Webcams chat. Hot girls and boys video chat. <laughs> Wait, what? Where are you this, seeing that? This is on our fucking on chat. YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. Check this out. You got, oh, I can't see that. Wait, I'm missing it. Where is it? Webcamchat.com, hot girls and boys video chat. Dude, <laughs> sign me up, bro. <laughs> 69, oh, 69 a month. How do you even get on this shit? <laughs> no, we'll give you a free membership at MIC if you give us a free membership. You guys are awesome. Webcams. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. That's funny, man. Oh, perfect. Yeah. k chair. Nice. Nice. And here's the thing about being aggressive. Hello. Right? Oh. Dude, there's people who do fantasy orders that are super aggressive. And then super conservative on like low hanging fruit like this. I'm super conservative. I want the outermost pivot. I love it, man, because this is so, so broken, bro, where, you know, you got to get in some, so I get in some and then 
the, the only time that I would have a FOMO order is on low hanging fruit. Cause I know 90% of the time I'm going to make money on it because yep. it's going to go down. It's a matter of where am I going to enter? So I have a little bit of position FOMO and I'll add where I want to add. Yep, exactly. See, mine are my my favorite bow are always the day ones that are so freaking broken. Like the one I brought up in that example, it, it that it's trading so far under view up. Like those are the ones I just get so much FOMO on. The excruciatingly broken day one where something else is taking attention, and then I hit it at view up. Like that is my number one trade, man. So that's the thing, man. My if you're a short seller, I tell you right now, trade only low hanging fruits and broken stocks, and Correct. you're never gonna get. <laughs> you never get INDP, okay? Well, and, for a visual <laughs> representation of a perfect example, guys, Bao's literally talking about this. Um, let me let me find it. The one I showed earlier. So low hanging fruit like life, and then something like this. Like, look at how broken this is. What's an outer line on something like CYCC? Well, it's going to be VWAP or something like this. Like, look at how much overhead this has pre market. What do you think? It, like, dude, what do you think is going to happen on a pop? gonna get sold off into or at least offer a really good nail and bail at that level if you wait for it at the very least and all you need is one or good two nail and bails a day you don't need this to go from 360 to 310 you just need to get in and out like again bow said dude what do we always say pike our way to millions right like that's how bow made his fortune man piked and scalped his way to millions of dollars like dude Hey, call, call us whatever you want to call us, man. <laughs> call us losers if you want. I don't give a shit. The funny, the funny thing is these guys are holding for dollars. And I'm like, I'm here channel trading it three times and making more than a dollar. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And if you channel trade it right with the right entries and you make 20 cents, 20 cents, 20 cents, that's 60 cents. That's a big move. Yeah, hell yeah. The key, guys, I'll tell you, is to be able to have discipline to avoid Looking at shit like INDP. Man. Oh, man. No, I love hearing this stuff. AJ Jackson on YouTube just said, I just came across this YouTube while at work and I definitely want to join. Bro, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that you got value out of this webinar, man. That means a lot to us. If you have any questions about joining AJ, uh, just text me um, at my business line. Oops. Yeah, everybody wants to join Text Tosh. Yeah, you want to send them um, dirty photos? Send Text Tosh. <laughs> <laughs> the webcam there they're, they're gonna text me uh text me 213-458-5997 brother if you want to join i will show you how to get half off your first month or if you want to come in annual i'll hook you up uh just text me and we'll we'll figure something out for you but i'm telling you man if you want to learn day trading there's no better community than mic Dude, I'm getting chick. I'm getting chicken curry FOMO, man, on that freaking like, dude. Did you see this, man? Like, who was cooking earlier? Or where was it after? Oh shit, I can't remember where it was. I'm starving. <laughs> I'm getting food FOMO, man. We all have FOMO at some. Realize it's almost 4 p.m., dude. Is that crazy? The day flew by, man. Crazy. Bro, the, I, I'm going up to. Um, I need a change of scenery. I'm going up to Sedona this weekend, man, which is like three hours for me to just like do a calm weekend in a cabin, dude. I need to detach from tech. But I will still be at my business line if you guys need me just sporadically, man. I'm taking a breather in nature this weekend, man. Oh, I'm getting FOMO. Tosh blocks out 929 in first spot. <laughs> the best I <on> reach. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Steven, where are you at right now? Where are you traveling, man? Dude, our, our travel mod just got to Latvia. That's sick, dude. Just, he came from Estonia, right? World travel. Hey, bro, how many countries have you been to, man, these days? Jeez. Stop pumping moonshine, moonshine on YouTube. Nobody gives a fuck about your hollow coin. Get that crypto bullshit out of here, you scam artist. Hollow coin. <laughs> Why don't you just learn to trade, bro? Moonshine. Yeah, buy. So you don't have to, you have to fucking be a moonshiner. Not scamming people, man. Nobody's buying your shit coin. It's okay. We can teach them all. You know what, man? Scam someone out of ninety-nine dollars and join MIC. <laughs> it's only ninety-nine bucks, guys. First month, join. Seriously. If you learn, it applies to crypto too, moonshiner. Moonshine's one of those crypto. Hey, type your, your phone number in there, Tosh. Yep, right here. Right, go to the website, man. My, 
if you don't know how to sign up, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> guys, right here. Mindmasterclub.com. The information is there. Uh, Tosh's info is on there. Book a call. Anything you guys need, man, we're going to hook you up. We're not going to pump and shill some hollow coin you. We're going to teach you a process that will actually make you money for the next hundred years if you survive long enough. This is something that's been proven, man, for decades upon decades, not some new type of pump and dump scam, man, like freaking 99% of crypto. Yeah, we just replied, guys, so guys are in um, the MIC webinar when we reply to YouTube because every Wednesday, this is a public, we give away a free public webinar. Yep. And whoever's smart enough to attend <laughs> gets to learn for free. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Economist Mahmed just said how to join a loss from 10K to 3K. Brother, stop trading real money immediately. Economist, join MIC. Learn on a simulator, bro. Stop trading real money if you don't know what you're doing for a week. Give us, give us two weeks to a month watching our materials, learning on a simulator, bro. And then when you feel confident, go back to real money, but join and learn, man. Don't gamble. Don't, don't turn that 3K into zero. Like, dude, be careful, man. Be careful. Yeah, I'm, t I'm telling you, man. Be careful, bro. It, it, the, the market is a jungle out there if you don't have mentorship. It's a fucking jungle. Hey, uh, to the moon. I got all these crypto guys, man. It's crazy. What's these that? All crypto shit. All these crypto guys. Everyone's a trip, crypto trader. That's crazy. Cause yeah, because it's like get rich quick shit, right? Well, that's that's the whole like that's literally the whole topic of this of this webinar today. Outside of what we titled it is the shiny object and hey, let's make a million dollars this year so we can retire at 18. Like, fuck off, dude, that doesn't exist. People get lucky, yes, but building lasting foundation and things that are real, um, that's that's what it's all about, man. I mean, the market's gonna be here in 100 years. Holocoin will be here for another week, that's it. Bitcoin might be here for 100 years, I don't know. Who, who knows, but blockchain technology is good. But dude, you pumping one out of 10,000 coins? Get real, bro. <laughs> lick my coin and lick my balls. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, Flexo, man. That was funny, bro. I hope you're an MIC, man. That, you're our people. That was funny. My balls. I love it, man. That is hysterical, bro. Yep, yep, yep. Dogecoin. The Doge. The Doge father, Elon. Yeah, guys, be, care be careful out there, man. There's just so many pump and dumps no matter what industry in. Hell, there's fucking pump and dumps in real estate, man. Some guy will try to unload a property onto you and then you find out the boiler's busted and the house explodes and you can't even flip that shit right. Like, dude, there is a pump and dump in every industry, man. And we- uh, dating, dating too. In da oh, dude, I've been catfished on Hinge more times than I can count, bro. You show, up, you show up to the date and you're like, damn, those are some filters. All right, I'm gonna make this shit quick. Dude, I, I'm way too nice. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a date, man. It's literally happened to me like three different times where I'm way too nice, man. And there's been girls where I was like, you really look nothing like your five pictures. So I'm going to suffer this two hour coffee date and then I'm going to bounce. But I'm too, I'm too nice. I can't be like, yeah, you look nothing like your pictures. I'm out this bitch. Like, I just can't do that, man. I, I wish I could. I don't have that trait in me. At least you get dates, bro. <laughs> Be happy you get dates. <laughs> oh shit! I guess there's always something to be grateful for. <laughs> Seriously, Tosh, like, fuck me, I'm too nice. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but Val, you can freaking trade spreads like nobody's business. So <laughs> I don't know. I got, I, got, I, got, I got spreads like you. <sighs> Dude, I'd, I'd rather, I'd, I'd rather do a different type of spreading. Oh, <laughs> you sick fuck! I love it. <laughs> Oh, shit. MIC dating 101. Oh, man. Spread the cheeks, man. Hey, if anything else, guys, on YouTube, join MIC. Put trader on your Tinder profile. Watch what happens. <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously? <laughs> Date trader. Boom. Instant match. <laughs> Instant match. Val, post that video of that girl that's like, I can't get enough of that video where she's like, God, girls, we have to stop dating day traders. It's not a career. They're <laughs> lying. <laughs> that find that one, bro. Maybe we'll end the webinar with a laugh. Yeah, we got that one.
Dude, that is the best video of all time. <laughs> Tinder. Oh yeah, man, dude. Tinder is a jungle nowadays. That girl got dumped by. She got pumped and then dumped by a day trader. Oh, here's <laughs> the day trader did the pump and dumping. <sighs> yeah, seriously, cute. <laughs> You're telling me, man. Dude, look at this. We'll end with this, guys. Check this out. This is hysterical. We have to stop dating day traders. Ladies, if a man says he's a day trader, cut it, go, you gotta leave. That, that, that's the same exact thing as them telling me that the Wolf of Wall Street's their favorite movie. It just makes me run in the opposite direction. And I encourage you all to do the same. That's not a career. And I'm not saying he needs to have a career, but if his career is being a day trader, you fucking book it, bro. Dude, so I'll translate. What happened was, is she was dating a trader who claimed to show P&Ls and make a lot of money, and she found out years later that he was a paper trader. <laughs> she wanted the Gucci, and he was like, sorry, baby. <laughs> now, what do you think, man? This one, man. <laughs> oh, this one. <laughs> this, 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 <laughs> this is more like us, dude. This is more realistic. Dude, hold on. I have to preface before I play this video. My dad's been a day trader for 20 plus years, and he's been so cut in his ways of bad habits i'm not kidding you dude still to this day this is my dad this is my fucking dad hold on one sec <laughs> dude you're gonna crack up this is like trading with my dad jesus fucking christ no way no fucking way this is gonna happen again like you did to me last time you fucks the fucking price you said the stage was fucking good man come on <laughs> Dude, I literally think that was my video. I think I filmed that seven years ago with my dad. Bro, I cannot tell you how many times I videotaped my dad like that. And I lost like the files on like phones over the years. But I used to videotape my dad doing like that. He'd be like, not today, you fuck. And I'd just be in the living room like cracking my ass off, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, you guys, you guys are sick fucks to pick a trading career, man. We are all degenerates, let me tell you. But if you want to learn and you're bit by the bug, there's no better place than MIC, man. Now, what do you think, man? Is it lunchtime? Any more questions? Otherwise... Last minute? Last minute questions? <laughs> Kyle goes, sounds like me today on Amazon. Dude... During lull, man, Bao taught me this many years ago. It's so much cheaper to just go online shopping than, than go back to trading and try to revenge trade. Any last, last minute questions? Got last minute, two minutes, last minute questions before we wrap this up. <laughs> Those are so funny, man. Elijah goes, I joined MIC recently like a week ago. My plan before was to join and watch all the videos in one month, then leave, but he's saying he's going to stay. Dude, that's awesome. Dude, See the value dude, in the club. You leave us. Don't leave, man. Don't leave us. There's enough room on this door, Jack. I promise. <laughs> Who knows that reference? Yeah, dude. I had the same plan when I joined, watch all the videos and leave, ha. Huh? <laughs> there are a lifetime of videos. Now Girls to Trade is a junior mod. Like, go figure, man. I'm telling you, man. That's, that's awesome. That is awesome. I, I can't tell you how many people text me the same thing or call about the same thing. They're like, Tosh, I legitimately wanted to come in for a month, watch the videos and bounce. But the community is so much fun. It's so funny. You people are awesome. You truly want to help. And the content's so good. Like, like the thing, I'll leave you with this. The thing that's, so, yeah, there you go, Fred. You got it. The thing that's so funny about traders who like learn and then want to leave is the fact that you're going to realize as soon as you leave that like the FOMO of the fun of the community and the people doing it together is what the community, like, dude, once you learn, doesn't mean you want, like, you go. I mean, you can if you want, but. Fine. Well, that's, that's because people think that it's a fraud. People think day trading is a, is a fucking fraud. It was a fraud. And so they come in with these spec, um, like, you know, like they, they don't believe it. So 
That's why it's very hard to get people in the door to begin with. But once people get in the door, you, you, they're going to realize it's real. Exactly, man. Exactly. Exactly. So I just think like, it's funny. We all get FOMO of something, right? Like I said, it, when you leave MIC and you're like, oh man, I got this. I don't need that. Dude, the FOMO is seeing the watch list every day, talking to the members, DMing your tab partner. Like, dude, it's just, it, like, you want to come back. So hope you guys learned something today, man. Uh, Bao, I guess one last question. Bao, what was the worst experience or lesson you had in your trading? Ever? Yeah, I guess uh, so. We'll save it for next time. This, this is not going to be bad. <laughs> it's more, this is, join MIC, I'll tell you all the time. This is too long to, this is uh, way too long to figure, to talk about. So. Bao needs a good half hour to rant that one, man. I'm, I learned this, guys. I learned a lot of fake fucks out there. No offense to the fake fucks, but they're fake fucks. Um, they scam people, and it gives us a really hard time. And this is why people, you know, go, what, what, this, is, this is the hardest part about trading. Pe people think trading is random. It's gambling. And because of the scammers, the moment, the moment you realize that, hey, man, we, you can do this, that it's not random, that there are people that make money pretty much every day, almost every yeah. day. Right. And take a look at Alex. Right. I mean, I don't want to post anything, but I'm using Alex because, you know, Alex was where you guys were. I met Alex when he was a kid. He didn't know much, mentored him and look at him now. Seriously, same thing with Tosh, same thing with everybody. Uh, I don't like to talk about myself because I mean, what, what, what use is that? Right. <laughs> so I like to talk about the members and how they're growing. So that's why if you go to the MIC Instagram account, you'll see so many testimonials. Those are the, those are the real people that are learning. And so when, when you see that, guys, it gives you motivation. And so you work hard. And so you stop gambling. There but there are people that will gamble forever. And that's just in their nature. This is why you have to have the max daily loss. You have to have these risk parameters in place, guys. Guys, go to the testimonials page. These are not us. They're not paid actors. These are members who joined and then got a lot of content or value. I mean, there's endless pages. Seriously, like, like when I say endless, I mean endless. Like we can't even count is like the amount of like it's insane dude it's insane so just check it out check it out see what you think it's up to you to decide ultimately but you can get on a call with me you can literally probably just go on twitter and dm current members and ask what their experience is see the testimonials join these webinars i mean there's so much that we do you know, you know what's crazy tosh yeah we are the only ones that do the i do the instagram live every tuesday alex does it on monday you do this on wednesday Obviously, we're a scammer. Someone would speak up because this is live. By we now, after lie. three and a half years, <laughs> dude, right? Now, three and a half I mean, years. What the fuck, dude? If, if, if we were scammers, there'd be people logging in every day. This is why no one except us does these things, and we do it three times a week. Well, Bao said it the best that anything could ever be said about scammers in this industry for not scammers in this industry, right? Dude. We walk the streets, people want to meet us. We do in-person boot camps, obviously when coronavirus isn't raging. Like people who scam people don't want to meet their members, man. <laughs> like, we don't want to walk in the streets and show you where we are. Like there's a very big difference. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's the thing, man. We were scammers and stuff. The members here would be saying <laughs> whatever, right? So it's or pretty obvious. Or they want to us at a fucking meetup, dude. They want to- Hey, Farmer, where does Farmer live? <laughs> no, he, he has to hide in the woods somewhere, bro. Dude, farmer, <laughs> Farmer's on Mars, dude, with Elon. He's scared as hell. Dude, <laughs> seriously. You see, that's what's fucking crazy. There's every- No one is seen in public. Dude. There's I, no one except us. For bro. some reason. Come meet us, man. I can't wait to, dude, I've met, I've lit, I'm not kidding you. I've met half of our member bases in person, shake half of these hands. And I can't wait to meet the other half. Like that's the whole point of what Make we do. Make sure you wash time. your hands after you wash the yeah, <laughs> seriously, That's a lot of people. But imagine like farmer giving meetups, dude. Like, all you, his, man? all his tender dates. I don't know where your hands been, bro. Oh, <laughs> hey, don't ask, don't tell, baby. <laughs> See where they are in Sedona this weekend. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right, guys, it's been fun. I wish I could stay and keep chatting, which I could, but. I know, you know we could, man. I got to eat something, though. Oh, dude, and, and uh, Ray, that is one of the number one places I actually want to visit. Dude, we have to plan a Singapore one, man, seriously. I really want, I've never been to Singapore. Hey, Singapore, that's where the three floors are. <laughs> no way. <laughs> we'll keep that for a real another time. <laughs> Ray, tell me about the three floors. <laughs>
<laughs> no, dude. <laughs> ah, I'm not going to say the word, the, the last word, the three floors. He knows where that is. <laughs> What's up with the three floors of XYZ? We'll keep that for the next rated podcast. Yeah, I think Ray's typing. What do you think, Ray? Uh, I was telling you, I was telling these guys who've never been to Singapore where the three floors are. <laughs> if Ray knows what that is, he's truly a sick. What rhymes with floors? <laughs> hey, what happens on the fourth floor? The three floors. Don't go to the fourth floor, dude. Oh, some guy go. What about that stuff on Google Leaks Twitter? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? These are fucking trolls. You want to listen to fucking Google Leaks? You believe a fucking loser? Yeah. Whoever believes that Google does not belong in MIC. I do not want to educate anybody that is watching and listening to trolls. Guys, you can put your focus on positivity or the opinions of others. It's just... Wait, wait, what do you think about the, the trolls? What the, why, why do I need to defend against fucking shit that does not exist? <laughs> but, but, the, but the boogeyman so, told me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, it's fucking... It's, it's, the, 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 it's just fucking funny when, when people, when you have to defend yourself against like crazy shit that anonymous people make up. Dude, you know, you know, Alex taught me years ago, man, he got, so, Alex got the most hate I've ever seen of anyone get in my lifetime when MIC was created. I mean, dude, people turned on him out of jealousy. Like we lost best friends, multiple, like it was so unbelievable the amount of hate Alex specifically got and how many trolls and since then, dude, he's become so numb to it. He's like, dude, I don't even think about it. I don't comment them. Like, why would I focus when I'm doing so good in my life and focusing on such beauty? Why would I give them one even breath of existence? And I'm like, dude, I'm trying to learn that. Like, that's fucking awesome. He's impervious. No, let, let, him, let him fucking uh, let him laugh from his uh, bamboo, right? That's from wheels up, baby. From wheels up, man. I, yeah, I'm sure while Alex is driving his performante, he's thinking about fucking trolls. <laughs> Not. Dude, guys, give us a call. Give us a text. If you want to join, we're going to show you how to fucking trade correctly. No pump and dumps, no bullshit. We are going to teach you real strategies. I'm telling you right now, get this while it's hot because we're getting tired. Bow said he wants to retire one day. You never know, man. This could be the last year. You never know. Come get it while it's hot. But, um, dude, we will, uh, we'll do this next week. I think it's lunchtime. And, Bow, dude, I'll see you next week, buddy. All right, guys. See you, guys. Gotcha. Right. So you're back in after hours. Hell yeah.